What's up, everyone? This is Mitch from BoardCo. Welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about um, a subject we talk about pretty regularly around here um, and that guys ask us all the time about, and that is, uh, well, going along on the, our continuing discussion about different boat brands and how they compare to one another. Now, this one's probably one that's uh, one of the bigger ones that people ask all the time, and that is, how do Supreme boats compare against Axis boats? So um, as you... As you're probably aware, Supreme is uh, a partner sister brand with Centurion, uh, Centurion being the higher end of the two, and then Axis is the sister brand to Malibu. Um, and so you have those two, you have Centurion versus Malibu, and you have Su Supreme versus Axis. We're going to be talking about the Supreme versus Axis end of the spectrum today and walking through it. So let's jump in and get started. I want to first point out before we do that everything I'm expressing here is my opinion. Um, also, it should not be any... Uh, great surprise to any of you um, that I run a company called BoardCo. We're the largest Centurion Supreme dealership in the country. So I'm obviously biased, but I'm going to try and put as little bias into this as I possibly can and try and give you as much of just the straight facts and information as I can possibly put together. Um, and that is to hopefully help you make decisions to know what to look at and what to do when you're comparing these two boats if you're out shopping between them. Or if you're just curious and want to know more about tow boats, this is a cool way to find out more information about them. So we're going to talk about what each one of these boats does better than the other and how they compare against one another. So first off, let's talk about the brands themselves, how they differ and what they are and what some of their philosophies are. So um, to give you some idea, so we're going to start with Supreme. Um, Supreme is, as I mentioned, a sister brand to Centurion on the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, Supreme was actually initially acquired by Centurion. It was a different brand entirely um, back in 2013, I believe. Maybe it was 2012, um, but somewhere right in there, 2012, 2013. Um, shortly thereafter, um, within a couple of years, toward the end at uh, in 2015, Centurion and Supreme were acquired by CorrectCraft. Now, if you're not familiar, CorrectCraft is the parent company that also owns a number of other companies such as Nautique, they own PCM and Inmar engines. Uh, they own a number of different uh, fishing boat companies and some other different companies, such as like Action Wake Parks. Um, but they're a, they're a holding company primarily operating in the marine space. Um, the first brand that they got started with was Nautique, but then they split and, and uh, established a holding company, which they moved to Correct Craft. Nautique became a separate brand. And so Nautique does not own Centurion or Supreme. Correct Craft does, and they're operating completely independent of Nautique. Now, Centurion and Supreme are operated the same. They have the same management team. They have the same building philosophy. They do know how, do now have two separate factories, um, but that was more of just uh, being able to keep up with the demand cycle, not necessarily because they needed to be built different. In fact, the two boats are built very, very similar. Um, you could build a Supreme and a Centurion factory and build a Centurion and a Supreme factory with their processes, but they did split them just so that they could keep materials and keep uh, supply chains better organized. So... Uh, so that, that shift has kind of happened. Now, because Supreme was um, acquired a little bit later on, it was initially a separate brand, but they kind of morphed it into a, a sub-brand to Centurion, allowed Centurion to focus on more of the high end of the spectrum, not build any of the lower tier boats so that they could keep some of their proprietary technology, things such as ram fill ballast and things like that in the Centurion line, but then introduce Supreme and have it be a top tier um, premium entry level tow boat that could come in into that space. So... That's kind of th how things ended up transpiring with Supreme. For the most part, Centurion and Supreme dealers are one and the same, though there are some Supreme dealers that are separate from Centurion dealers and in other locations, such as uh, it, there's a fan full of them there in like Nautique dealerships, as an example. Um, if you're, and they have Nautique as kind of the upper end boat in comparison to Supreme, even though a lot of their philosophies are very different as far as how the, the boats are built and how they perform and how they create things like surf waves and things like that. So... Hopefully that's getting a helpful introduction, talking about Centurion and Supreme. Um, as I mentioned, we, uh, we we have been a Supreme dealer effectively since they were acquired by Centurion um, back at that time. And so um, we're, we're, I'm very, very familiar with uh, Supreme boats and have been for quite a while. And in fact, I've owned quite a few of them myself. So jumping in and talking about the other side, Axis. Um, Axis is a little bit different. They were actually started as a, um, a sub-brand to Malibu. Um, it started as a as an idea by actually um, a fellow by the name of Paul that I'm very good friends with. Um, he kind of came in and, and introduced access to Malibu and, and that design concept in Malibu's executive team. And the idea was to create a boat brand that was 
separate from Malibu and didn't cannibalize Malibu sales. So it really at the time was positioned more like what uh, like Heyday would be considered in the Tobo space today. Over time, uh, Axis has elevated to be more and more expensive and more similar to Malibu than it was initially. And so because of that, it has kind of cannibalized their sales, but it's kind of split into a, a, a higher and a lower, a higher tier and a lower tier brand, um, similar to what Centurion Supreme is, um, as well as other different boats that are in a similar space, such as Taiga ATX, such as Moomba Supra, or if you want to compare it to the car world, very similar to like a Toyota Lexus style relationship. So Axis shares a lot of things with Malibu. Um, the, about the only thing that's really proprietary to Malibu at this point is the is uh, some of their technology like the dash screen systems. Uh, for a while, they weren't doing things such as surfgate technology on Axis, but now it's it's shifted to where now Axis is basically just a low grade port at this point. So, um, ho hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, Malibu and Axis are uh, owned by their own company. They're actually they were owned by a uh, private equity group, um, which still has a really large share of it. Um, but they are all but they are actually a publicly traded company now, which. Um, has shifted some of the dynamics about how they build their boats, what they do, and some of their philosophies. Um, but the idea of trying to report quarterly earnings and things of that nature, it's a little different than when you have a privately held company uh, like Correct Craft that is fully privately family held that uh, they can make decisions and do things just a little bit different. So influ influence is how the boats are made, and you might see that in some of the things that we're talking about and what we're doing. So that's kind of the difference as far as the design philosophy between the two brands. Now, as far as the boats themselves, they're fairly similar. Um, Axis has six models. Supreme has five. The biggest differences between the two is um, when you come down to it, Axis has a 20-foot model um, where Supreme does not. So Supreme does a 21, basically a 21-foot model. Axis does a 20-footer, a 22-footer. Um, Supreme does a 21 instead of a 22. Uh, but then you you basically have like a 22 and a half, a 23 and a half, a 24, very similar to what Supreme does all the way up to a 25. Um so when we're talking about these two boats, they're very similar. The one exception is if you need a 20-foot boat because you've got a length restriction, you're pretty much limited to access. Aside from that, you're going to be very similar between uh, the two brands, and we can pretty closely go model to model. So um, if there's any discrepancies with what I'm talking about that are very model-specific, I can get into that. But when we're talking about Malibu and, or sorry, talking about Axis and Supreme, their, their models are going to be pretty similar across the board. So whether you're talking about a 22-foot Supreme, a 24, um, or a 22-foot axis, a 24-foot axis, they're going to have very similar dynamics between the boats. The main differences are just going to be size. They don't have any big radical shifts in the size range like you see in some other brands where and their 22-footer and their 26-footer are just radically different boats. Um, that's not necessarily the case with these. It's mostly just a size thing. There are some differences, like Axis has the A-series and the T-series. A-series is a pickle for bow. T-series is traditional. Um, where Supreme has got their ZS series, which is um, a pickle fork bow, and you have the S series that's a modified traditional, more squared off nose. Um, but that one's just a little bit more of a stylistic design uh, for either one of those. But they're overall pretty similar boats, pretty similar performing boats uh, for both all of the boats in the Axis lineup and all the boats in the Supreme lineup. So now that I've covered that, let's dive into the boats themselves, how they're different, how they function. And we are going to start off with the interior. All right, so let's jump in and talk about the interior of the boats and how they differ from one to another. Um, and while we're going through this, I'll give you just my opinions on what the differences are between them or, or which one I like better and why. Um, they're, these are just my opinions. I'll try and back them with as much facts as I can. But the best way to try and figure these out and look at it is just look at the two boats yourself. Go and spend some time touching and feeling and seeing if what I'm saying is accurate or if you disagree with it, um, which I don't have any problem if you disagree. Um, also, nothing I'm saying here is saying anything against any Supreme owners or any Axis owners. If you have an Axis, it's a great boat. You're having a great time on it. It's totally fine. Um, I've actually spent a fair bit of time in an Axis boat myself. Um, had a great time surfing behind it. Had a great time wakeboarding behind it. Um, they do a great job and you can have a lot of fun behind them. I've obviously spent a lot of time in Supremes as well. And so when we're talking about these different boats, it's just my opinion. Take it for what it, for what that's worth and take it for what you pay for it as well. So now in talking about it, let's look at some of the differences between the boats. So um, the difference that you end up having between these is, first off, let's talk about the interior materials that they use. So the vinyl and that that goes in the inside of the boats. Um, so between the two, um, Axis has a really flat vinyls type design. Um, it's a pretty 
thin vinyl material uh, that has like single stitching running all the way through. It's, it's about as inexpensive of a material as you can get. Um, the seat cushions are really lightweight, which if you're picking them up and moving them, can be kind of nice. Uh, but they also, they're lighter weight for a reason. It's lower quality, it's less expensive, um, things of that nature. This one's pretty simple. Uh, we actually had this, I shot another video where we were comparing the fit and finish between different boats. And we uh, showed a, a new Supreme and we actually showed a new Axis to compare and contrast them. And oftentimes the seat cushions in a Supreme are about twice as thick as the Axis. And they're about four times as heavy. And that's just because they're running a heavier grade foam, a lot thicker vinyl, um, much higher end materials. It's just heavier and more robust. Um, and uh, the reason why they don't in the Axis is primarily from a price standpoint. So um, that is something that between the two, the Supreme is running a much heavier grade materials, um, particularly on the inside of the boat, then the, the um, vinyl top coat is about three times as thick. In fact, it might be four times as thick as what Axis runs. Um, it's just going to hold up a lot better over time. So that's going to be one difference you're looking at between them when you, when you look at that piece. Now, the next part uh, that ties into it is the components in the boat. So we're talking about things such as grab handles, uh, hinges, even just things like through hole fittings uh, for like ballast vents, as an example. Um, in an axis, you're, you're dealing with a lot more plastic style components. In Supreme, there's a lot more metal um, that's machined in it. There are some plastic aspects of Supreme um, that, that would be shifted to more metal components in like a Centurion, but there's substantially more metal components and higher end uh, component finishing in Supremes than there are in an axis. And most of those pieces for a Supreme are in areas where it doesn't matter much. Like if you're talking about like, let's say an armrest or something like that. Um, not, not such as, uh, not smaller uh, parts such as hinges or um, other different components that have a lot of water interaction or have, uh, have much movement attached to them. Those are very much all going to be metal. So they hold up better over time and you don't have as much warranty issues and things of that. So uh, those components. I'm going to pretty squarely fit on the Supreme side of things. If, you, if you're wondering how questions about that, just go check them out and look at them. It's pretty cut and dry. Now, the next piece I want to talk about on the interior is uh, specifically dealing with the storage space. This is something a lot of people have questions, thoughts, uh, opinions on, and I wanted to give you my feedback and thoughts and, and what the differences are between the two boats. So when you're looking at um, an Axis versus a Supreme, the difference between the storage configuration on the boat is that a Supreme is going to have more storage in the rear section of the boat, like in the rear uh, storage lockers. It's going to have a lot more storage underneath the main observer seat, and it's going to have more storage in the bow. And Axis is going to have quite a bit more storage underneath the side seats of the boat and less storage in those other areas. Now, let's talk about why. So um, the reason why Supreme has less storage underneath the side seats is that there's a fair bit of that uh, space that is taken up by ballast. So they do big, large subfloor ballast tanks that stretch from the very back of the boat basically up to where the windshield is. So underneath all of the seats on the interior of the boat um, through the main cockpit area, those pretty much all are have ballast that sits underneath them. Um, you still have a fair bit of storage underneath it. It's about, uh, you know, 8, 10 inches of storage underneath those seats. Um, but it's not the 14 to 20 something inches that you get in an axis that's much deeper. So in an axis, it goes basically all the way down to the the uh, hull lining of the boat. On a Supreme, it goes down, and then there's a glass ballast tank that sits right there. Now, why does Supreme do ballast right there? Um, the answer is the ballast configuration is very different. They try to distribute ballast evenly throughout the boat, which is um, which we'll talk about a lot more in the ballast section coming up, um, where axis doesn't have any ballast through the center section of the boat. Um, all of their ballast is located in the rear of the boat and in the front of the boat, with the vast majority being in the rear. So because it's got that much in the rear, you've got a um, hard tank ballast, and then you've got a plug-and-play ballast if, if you have that option in the axis in the rear. You, you've got virtually all of your storage space in the rear of the boat taken up. Um, and so they open up the storage space underneath the side seats so that you have more storage under there. Um, Supremes are a little bit different. You have a storage space on top of the plug-and-play bags in the rear locker is actually a fair bit. Um, that's where I put most of the life jackets that I take in the boat is in those compartments. Um, but you, it does take up um, you, you do ha not have as much storage space underneath the side seats. Now, this is something people climb in the boats, and if they're used to having like a Malibu or an Axis, they go, oh, man, this Supreme doesn't have very much storage. Um, and uh, vice versa, you have Supreme owners or Centurion owners 
they'll go and open up the back lockers in a Malibu or open up the main observer locker. They go, man, this doesn't have very much storage space. They're honestly pretty similar between the two boats. It's just where it's located. Um, I personally like having it in the back section, like where you have in Supreme, just because that's going to be more functional storage space. You're not having to have people move and get out of the way to access it. Um, but there are some guys that really like having that that big, big deep cavern of storage underneath the side seats on an access boat. Um, as far as why the observer locker is so much bigger than the Supreme, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I've actually always wondered why they don't have a larger observer locker in their boats. Um, but it, it is something that's just much larger in a Supreme than it is in access. So um, hopefully that wraps up the storage and gives you an idea between the two. Similar storage, just where it's located is going to be the big difference between those two, between the two. Next thing I wanted to talk about on the inside is the flooring setup. Now, uh, between the two boats, you're going to have very similar flooring between them. They both have a foam, uh, what, what Malibu or Access refers to as a soft grip flooring. Um, it's one that uh, the main difference between them is in an Axis is when they source themselves and it's more of a smooth texture. Um, on a Supreme, you're going to have a flooring that's done by Gator Step. Um, this is also something you can get aftermarket that is, uh, it's really the highest and most robust flooring on the market in the marine space. Um, it's really heavy grade. Uh, it's got a little bit more texture to it, so it's not as slippery when it's wet, and it's just a lot more durable overall. Um, so between the two, uh, that's something that Supreme is a pretty clear winner on, um, unless you just really, really like the super smooth texture that's a little more slippery in an axis, um, in which case you may want to go that direction. But between the two, if you look at them, a Supreme is a little nicer as far as the flooring goes, which goes along the same theme as what you have with uh, the components as well as the other materials that are there on the inside. So next thing we can talk about on the inside is uh, there's, there's uh, a few different pieces that we can discuss. The first one is talking about the dash design. Um, now between them, the Supreme has got a little bit larger screen um, with a little more intuitive and, and more robust controls than what you have in an Axis. That said, Axis dash has come a long way in the last couple of years. If we were having the same discussion three years ago, it would be knocked down, dragged out, when like not even close, the, you know, a blowout win for Supreme on this one. Um, Axis has started to have a screen interface that has a lot more controls, a lot more functionality. It's substantially better in the new in the new versions. So um, that's going to be a little bit closer tie-in. Um, in fact, there's actually some aspects to Axis like I actually look a little better. Um, some of their sport keypad and their stereo controls, if you go with the the pro level dash in an Axis, um, those are really nice. Um, and, and actually, there's some aspects to it I like slightly better than what Supreme is using. Um, but, uh, that, that's one place that they are, that they have certainly upped their game a fair bit in the last few years that are doing a much better job. Um, it's, I'd say it's kind of a tie between these two because, uh, Supreme's got a, has a better overall screen interface and add more functionality and things of that nature. Um, but the Axis does have, uh, that sport keypad and, uh, the stereo control. It's pretty nice. So, um, where Supreme's is not quite as robust as what you end up getting in the, in, in, not, I shouldn't say robust. It doesn't have the same functionality as what you get that sport keypad in the access dash, which can be a really nice feature. Um, the next thing that we can talk about as far as interior layout, um, that's a kind of a personal preference thing is the battery location. So in a Supreme, the batteries are in the main OB locker. They're kind of recessed down underneath the, the passenger seat location. Um, but they do take up a little bit of storage space. If you like the storage underneath that passenger seat or in an access, they can pick them and move them underneath the center cushion bow. Now, um, the differences between them, you kind of have a personal preference thing going on. The advantage to the access, you do free up some storage space in the main observer locker. Um, you do lose that walkway that goes up the front. So if you like to remove that center cushion and drop your feet down in, that's not a, that's not really an option in an access boat because um, that's where the batteries sit. Or in a Supreme, it is. It's just a clear um, open area. Um, aside from that, um, the one major concern that people sometimes will have with moving those batteries to the bow um, versus having them in the observer locker is how, the, how close they're in vicinity to water, particularly if you're talking about like an axis that is rather prone to taking water over the front of the boat. Um, if you're pulling to your surf wave or something like that, um, and that water can very easily get down into the compartment where your batteries are. And um, I'm personally not a big fan of having a bathtub of batteries um, in the bow area. So uh, it, it's, it can be not really an issue for you if you're real, if you know what you're doing while driving or are, are confident that everyone who's going to drive your boat is going to drive it properly, then, uh, may not be as much of a concern for you. If you're a little worried because you're a novice driver or you've got other novice drivers that might be driving your boat, 
um, and you don't want to take uh, a wave going out the front and get your batteries wet, that is something to be uh, concerned about. Um, and uh, th they do differently between the two boat brands. So that uh, that when it comes to it, that's kind of what I would talk about as far as the interior um, breakdown. Like I said, some aspects of the dash system, they're a little bit nicer on an axis. You may like the battery location, um, the materials components, uh, build quality, um, and uh, the and those type of things are a little bit nicer in a Supreme. And then the storage configuration is just different between the two boats. Um, you may have preferences one way or another. Now, let's jump into the next thing we can talk about as far as Supreme versus Axis, and that is the tower design. So um, between the two, um, Supreme has two different tower options. They have the Shine Series tower that's standard, and then they have their F Series, which is what uh, like 90% of Supreme boats are equipped with. <laughs> Um, and most guys will opt to go up to that upper end tower, but you can't get a shine tower either way. Um, where Axis has their specific Axis series tower. Um, the difference is I believe now they have an option for a, uh, a weight assisted option that is available with it. They didn't used to do that in the Axis. That is one thing that's nice if you're dropping your tower up and down. Um, weight assist has always been standard on Supremes. Uh, whether you're talking about the F series or the shine series or, or really any of the towers there, they've been weight assisted for quite some time. So the, if you are going to be folding the tower down, you need to make sure you have weight assist on either tower. Uh, for Supreme, it's going to come with it. On Axis, you got to make sure that you have that uh, have that option on the Axis, um, which not I don't believe necessarily all of them do. Um, the next piece to talk about here is uh, with the towers is just the look and aesthetics. You may prefer the look of one versus another. Um, overall, the, the Supreme Tower, particularly the F-Series, is a lot more robust and is a lot heavier duty tower than what Axis runs. Um, but a lot of this comes down to aesthetics, just what you like the look up better. The main benefit of having a heavier duty, more robust tower is if you are going to load up things like tower speakers and racks and bimini and things of that nature up into the tower, having that heavier duty tower is going to keep it from shaking and moving, uh, which is going to definitely be a factor in an axis. If you put four tower speakers up there, it'll probably wobble a fair bit, uh, where in a Supreme, it's going to be a little bit more solid. So that is something to keep in mind while you're looking between those two boats. Next thing to talk about is the accessories and the components that go up into the tower. So first thing we want to hit on is board racks. So when you're looking between the board racks on the different boats, um, the bungee racks are going to be fairly similar. The Supreme bungee racks are a little nicer, and a little higher end, uh, but they're going to be fairly similar between the two. They're both bungee racks. I don't recommend bungee racks. Don't get them. Upgrade to strapless racks. It'll be the best decision you ever made putting on your boat. Um, the next piece, though, to it is there is some differences as far as different racks. On Supremes, you can do either clamping racks or hook style racks. Um, they have two different styles of strapless racks. On Axis, you have the clamping racks. Uh, only. Uh, now, as far as the clamping racks go, they're basically the same thing. They're both done by a company called PTM. They're the same racks, so no major difference. Now, we're talking about the hook racks. Those are only available on the Supremes. Those are the ones that I prefer um, significantly more. There are some pluses and, minus, pluses and minuses to each one. The plus side to the clamping racks is the, uh, we'll say which in wakeboards slightly better, um, as well as some people like the aesthetics of that rack better than the uh, hook style racks. For the hook style racks, the advantages are um, some people like the aesthetics of those ones better, so that's just personal preference. Um, but on the Supremes, those hook style racks, the uh, other advantages to them are number one, they are going to be able to have, uh, they're going to be able to hold surfboards substantially better. Uh, they, they don't allow them to move or to come out. Like you could drive down the lake going 40 miles an hour. And I've literally uh, uh, in hundreds of trips, never seen a board come out of one of those racks. Um, they just hold them extremely well. They're solid. Uh, they don't damage more fragile level boards, which is not the same case with clamp racks. With clamp racks, you can only put uh, fiberglass or carbon fiber boards up in them. You couldn't put an EPS or a high-end surf style board up in those racks where you can with uh, the hook style racks. So that is something that is a, is a big difference is, is the hook style racks are a lot better for surfers. Um, you can put wakeboards up in there as well. They work great. Um, but the clamp style racks may hold wakeboards slightly better where uh, the hook style racks will hold surfboards a lot better. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, next thing to talk about is, on the towers are uh, the speakers and how they interact and they work. Um, on the Supremes, they're running uh, higher end tower speakers. They're typically running wet sound uh, Rev 10s. Um, up in the tower, they're just a higher and more robust speaker. 
uh, for uh, Axis. Um, they may have changed it to Rev 8s, but I think they were still running Icon Series um, is what they're most commonly running. So they're not as high end of a speaker. So that is something to keep in mind if you're getting a factory tower speaker option. Um, and then when we're talking about it, uh, the other component is how they're equipped in. So with an Axis, it's a tubular bar that's just got a clamp basically that goes on. Uh, that the speaker attaches to where on the Supremes it's integrated into the tower. So it's just a bracket that uh, is is welded in and built on. So it's a pretty, it's a seamless look and it's also going to hold up a little bit better over time. You don't have um, clamps or something like that that may that may wear out to get replaced. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the last piece to it uh, when we're talking about the towers is uh, the Supreme F-Series tower has the ability to do fiberglass tower panels. That's not an option in Axis. So if you've got a purple metal flake, oh, as an example, you could do some purple metal flake up in the tower, um, as well as that tower can come in two different color options, either white or black, where the axis is just a straight black. Uh, I don't know if it's powder coated or whatever. It's kind of almost like a rhino line finish um, that they go up and that uh, that tower comes in that color, and that's pretty much it. So uh, that's that's about it. The last thing I'll talk about with towers, and one place I will say that Axis has a little bit of an advantage on, is if you're wanting to do quad border axis, that is something you can do in an Axis that is not available on a spring. So on um, a spring, you can hold more, more boards up like a bimini top and things like that. But if you're wanting to store like eight wakeboards in the tower, the Axis is going to be a better pick for that particular option. All right. One other thing that we're talking about the towers is uh, both of the towers you can either get in both Supreme Towers and uh, Axis Towers. You can get either a black or a white option. Um, the other difference that you have, though, is Supremes do have tower accent panels. What that means is that if you've got like a purple metal flank or red metal flake boat, you can put those metal flake accents up in the tower as well to kind of do a nice color matching piece. Um, where in the Axis, just a straight single color that's almost, it's kind of like a rhino line finish, uh, if that makes sense. It's a little different, like a rough texture. Where it's supreme, it's a gloss texture. Um, then you do have the option of doing those tower panels uh, in the F series tower, uh, which is what most of them are. For. So now that we've talked about that, let's jump in and talk about performance. All right. So as we're jumping into performance, the first thing we want to talk about is an objective measure um, that's going to impact the performance across the board, and that is ballast. Um, so there's a lot of other aspects that are subjective. We'll get to those in a second. But the objective thing is just talking about ballast and how each one of these brands approaches ballast because it is a primary aspect to each one of these different boats and how they will do things such as create a surf wave or create a wakeboard. So between the two, there's um, there's a pretty significant difference uh, between not just how much ballast is in the boats, but where it's placed and what they really do with it and why it's there. So when we're talking about it, um, probably the biggest thing to indicate and discuss is supreme designs and equips their boats primarily with a wake surf focus in mind. So that goes from the way they design their running surface to the ballast that they put in the boats to uh, pretty much everything about it. On an Axis, on the other hand, um, there's really not a very large difference between the Axis boats today and the Axis boats that existed back in like 2013. And uh, the running surfaces are very similar between the two boats. The way that they create a surf wave is very similar uh, between now and a 2013 axis. And so back in that time, the boats were not designed around creating a surf wave. They're primarily designed around creating a wakeboard. And so when you look at things such as how much ballast is in the boat, but more particularly where the ballast is placed, uh, that's going to be very indicative of what the boat was originally. Now, I already mentioned this when I was talking about storage space, but in an axis, the ballast distribution is roughly 80-20. In other words, 80% of the ballast takes it, it sits from the back seat of the boat backwards. So basically the back area engine compartment, and if you include the wedge, which is on the very back of the boat, that's 80% of the total ballast or um, ballast, simulated ballast in the case of a wedge exists in that area. About 20% is up in the bow. So you have a center ballast tank. In some, in some regards, it's, in, it's about windshield level. But for the most part, it's right underneath the bow. So that's there's no storage underneath the bow on an axis. It's all taken up with ballast. Um, and so you basically have 80-20. So 80% of the total amount, in, in fact, it's a little over 80, is at the very back of the boat. On a Supreme, it's a very different ballast configuration. Um, you've got that similar 20% or so that's up in the bow in a Supreme. Um, it's subfloor for the most part, but you do have a plug-and-play ballast bag that's, that's an available option there. Uh, but... From there, that other 80% or so is split 
between the back of the boat, like what you have with an axis, but also through the center line of the boat. It ends up being about 50-30. So about 50%, a little under 50% of the total displacement stakes is behind the back driver's seat. And another 30% is sitting through the midship of the boat. Now, why do each one of these manufacturers do it this way? So Axis puts it in the very back because it's the most convenient place to put ballast. It also makes it so they can free up more storage space on the interior, which makes the boat look like it has a lot more storage in a showroom. So you open up those side side seats, and it's like, oh, hey, this looks really nice. Um, and it's got a lot of appeal when you're in a showroom or at a boat show or something. You can look and go, oh, there's a lot of storage underneath there. On a Supreme, on the other hand, they, they divvy it up a little more to be more functional, and, which is not something that you can really tell as much when you're at a boat show or you're looking at a dealership showroom. Um, it's not something you really notice until you get out on the water. As I mentioned, that ballast distribution is going to make a big difference when you're surfing because a Supreme is going to surf more level to the water because the ballast is distributed fairly evenly throughout the boat, where an axis is distributed much more to the rear, so it's going to drive like it's pulling a wheelie top. So um, the main difference you have is if you engage the wedge on an axis, you're going to be standing up to see over the front of the bow, and uh, it's going to have a real big impact on the driving. Uh, Supreme, on the other hand, it's going to run a lot more level, which is going to impact the other surf performance and the driving performance, which we'll talk about more in just a second. Um, but uh, have a, the ballast distribution is a big, big difference between the two boats. Um, the other difference is the Axis has a wedge system, which is essentially a reverse hydrofoil that pulls and sucks the back of the boat down deeper into the water. Um, we'll get to that in just a second when we start talking about the surf technology. And uh, the last difference is with the ballast between the two boats is um, the total amount of ballast is pretty similar if you throw the wedge into the next. The thing you got to be careful of with the wedge is that they advertise the wedge as 1,500 pounds of downforce, um, which is the case, but because it's... It, it, or it may be the case, but the amount of downforce it creates is based on two things, the speed of the boat, and number two is the position of the wedge, and it goes anywhere from one to seven as far as the position. So it depends on what position it's in as to whether or not it's creating 1,500 pounds of downforce. It might be 1,000 pounds. It might be 500 pounds. It just depends on where you set and use your wedge. So it's not just a straight 1,500 pounds of ballast. It can be up to, if you take it all the way to a set at seven, you're running at the right speed. Um, but if you're familiar with Axis boats or you've run one yourself or you know people that do, they almost never run at a setting of seven. So they're typically running at a setting of five, um, sometimes three to five, somewhere right there. Um, if you run seven, it just pulls the bow way too high up and it makes it really hard to be able to surf unless you put a bunch of additional bat weight in the bow. And when I say additional weight, I'm not talking about factory ballast, I'm talking about either a bunch of people um, shifted up for it for the fort or um, putting additional water or steel weight in the bow to try and bring it down um, to level the running surface out. So we're talking about ballast. It's quantity of ballast. It's it's uh, the location of that ballast. Um, the last thing that I will talk about on this is one unique difference between Supreme and, and an Axis boat is the way the ballast comes installed from the factory. So on a Supreme, all, ba all ballast that comes in a Supreme is factory installed. That means that it that isn't just plumbed for it, but the actual bags come. Um, in an Axis, the bags are typically installed by a dealer. So there's plumbing and hoses that are run, but those hoses have to be cut and spliced and set up, and you have to connect bags to it. Now, the question is, is if you've got these things running, why does Axis ship the boats without? Well, the reason why is because it's going to impact the capacity rating of the boats. So if they ship the boats with just plumbing, they can, they, they're not specifying what size bags go in the back lockers. And they may say, hey, you could have 300 pound bags in those back lockers, but we're not controlling that. So it doesn't impact the capacity ratings of the boats. On the other side, for Supremes, it does. So this is one reason why if you look at, like, let's say, a Axis A24 and a Supreme S240, an A24 Axis is rated for more people than an S240 is because the S240 actually comes with that ballast pre plumbed If you were to throw that ballast into an A24, it actually would have a lower capacity rating than uh, the Supreme would because it's going to have an easier time taking water in um, throughout the boat and it's not going to be able to have the same capacity rating. So it's really more of a marketing thing than it is anything else. Um, the only other difference is you're paying to have that dealer go in and install bags and do a bunch of additional rigging expenses that happen uh, with those boats once it gets to the dealership. So that's one thing to keep in mind is, especially if you're looking at capacity ratings, 
they're not necessarily made equal because you have to factor ballast numbers into those. So um, now, now that we talked about that and talked about ballast, let's talk about the way that these boats create surf waves because that's going to be the other component once we jump in and start talking about the waves themselves. Um, so uh, the big differences between them is, uh, first off, the surf system that they use. Second off is the uh, attitude adjustment device they use, um, which I'll explain what that means in just a second. And the third is the running surface. So the first one, the surf system. So on Axis, you have Surfgate. On uh, Supremes, you have Quick Surf. The main difference between them is they're both plates that deflect, but on an Axis, you have the plate that comes directly out the side and that creates drag or pull um, on one side of the boat and essentially crabs the boat down the way. Um, we've done a whole video um, that, and uh, uh, breakdown where we talked about surf systems specifically and all the details with them. So I'm just going to give you a high level discussion because we have the full uh, big long breakdown about surf systems and what, how they do what and why and things of that nature. But the high level is this. Surfgate is going, um, that kicks out is going to do um, a few things well. First off is it's going to have the ability to switch from one side to the other faster than uh, the quick surf system that's on a Supreme. The second advantage to it is it's going to be slightly less weight sensitive. So if you have, excuse me, let's try it. The other advantage is that it's going to be slightly less weight sensitive. In other words, if you have somebody that gets up and moves from one side to the other, it's not going to have as much of an impact on the surf wave as if you have a tab style system like you have with this. Um, the third potential advantage that you have with that surf gate style system or that uh, that gates deflection system um, is that uh, it will not create any lift on the back end of the boat. So therefore, if you have exactly equal amounts of ballast in two boats with the same running surface, with the same setup, if you have a gate style system, your wave will be slightly bigger. Now, the difference you have on the negative side of it is it will create significantly more drag than a tab style system. And the second disadvantage is that it's just a simple on off. In other words, it's surf wave on, surf wave off. There's no adjustment to it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't actually do anything other than create the surf wave on the one side. It doesn't shape it. It doesn't tweak it. It doesn't fine tune it. It just makes it so it's there. Um, so there's that piece that John said. Now, the next part. Quick surf. The advantages and disadvantages are basically the exact inverse of what we talked about with Surfgate on the Axis. Um, the, dis the advantage to a Supreme is it's going to be more efficient. Um, it's going to produce significantly less drag. This is where the, the claim of having substantially better fuel efficiency comes from, or is one of the things. Um, the second thing is that it's going to be customizable. You can engage that plate at uh, 20 different preset positions for each plate. And that's going to make it so that we'll fine-tune and shape your surf wave as well as just deflect it over to one side. Uh, the third thing when it um, as far as an advantage um, other than those ones is it's going to have the ability to create some unique different surf wave sh shapes that are not available on an axis. So instead of just being on-off, it could really fine-tune the shape of the wave um, and create some unique shapes that aren't available on other boats. Um, the downside to it is it's not as fast for wave transfers, and it is slightly more weight sensitive. So if you have somebody, you know, something moves from one side to the other, you will notice it a little bit more on the quick surf system than you will on um, on an axis with Surfgate. Um, and I'll get back to that and talk about that in just one second. So that's as far as that system. Second piece to talk about is the attitude adjustment device. So we already talked about the wedge. That's the attitude adjustment device or per axis. Um, for a Supreme, it's the silent stinger plate system. Uh, the big difference between the two is that they'll both control the running attitude, but rather than pulling the back end down like you have with the wedge, you are um, pushing the nose down on the silent stinger plate on the Supreme. What's the difference? Um, the difference is that uh, one creates more drag, i.e. the wedge creates a lot more drag, where the quickster plate creates, or sorry, the uh, silent stinger plate creates less drag. Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages, like the wedge will not... Uh, make the wave smaller when you engage it, where the silent stinger plate will make it a little bit smaller as you engage it. Um, they both have the ability to sh shape the wave a little bit. Um, the difference is the silent stinger plate he does it in conjunction with the quick surf plate. This is one of the reasons why, as far as water ballast goes, a Supreme runs more total ballast than an Axis does because it doesn't have the displacement of the wedge. However, because it's not having that wedge drag that kicks in, the boat's going to be a lot more efficient and going to burn substantially less fuel. 
Um, we had some videos that we shot, but if you're going apples to apples, yeah. Axis versus Supreme, the, uh, the Supreme while surfing is going to burn nearly 50% less fuel. And uh, it's a combination of the of these three things I'm talking about, the, the surf system, the attitude adjustment, and the third thing, which is the running surface. Running surface, last piece to talk about here. Um, main difference, and we once again have uh, have uh, um, videos that we have on our YouTube channel that have gone through this in great detail. But effectively what you have is the the uh, rear half of an axis, it has a very flat shape. Um, that comes from a legacy of a wakeboard and water ski boat. Um, and that's what it's primarily designed for, where a Supreme has got a more V-shaped hull that was specifically fine-tuned and designed for wake surfing. Um, the main difference between them is that the flat hull shape is going to be more balanced. It's um, for at higher speeds for wakeboarding, if you're wanting to keep it level, um, hence a better wakeboard hull. Uh, it's, it's going to also uh, create, uh, it's going to displace less water. So it's going to be a slightly better water ski hull. Um, so that's something that to factor in that you can talk about on both those ends. Um, the V-hole for Supreme is going to be a substantially better surf hole. And that hole is going to naturally split water to one side or the other. And it's going to work in conjunction with the quick surf plates to make it so that you have the boat sitting deeper into the water and displacing more total water volume. Uh, the how deep it sits in the water is a measurement that's called draft, and an axis is typically sitting around 30 inches of draft, where a supreme is sitting at 36 inches of draft, meaning that there's six inches more of the boat that is sitting down and under the water before you put any ballast into it. So if you're talking about putting 4,000 pounds of ballast in one boat, 4,000 pounds in the other, the supreme is going to displace more water because it's naturally sitting deeper in the water from the beginning because of the shape. So hopefully that is helpful. Now. Now that we've talked about the ballast systems, we've talked about the different devices and systems on the boat and the things that shape and contour the water, let's talk about the performance in each aspect itself. So first off, wake surfing. Um, in this category, this is the one that most people care the most about. Um, the, the clear winner pretty much across the board is going to be the Supreme. Supreme surf wave is going to be longer. It's going to be more powerful. It's going to have a deeper angle, um, which is something that uh, we talked about in our in a surf weight breakdown that we've done. Where, in other words, it's got it stretches back behind the boat further instead of out to the side of the boat, meaning that you can use it to generate more speed um, and, and thrust for airs or three sixties or any kind of tricks that you're wanting to do. Um, so you have, uh, and as well as you're going to have a wave shape that's substantially longer, so um, longer, more powerful. Um, going to have uh, a, a deeper angle and it's going to be firmer and going to have more total water volume. Um, and that's due to the combination of just more overall displacement as well as the ability to manipulate and change it. Uh, the last thing and probably the biggest part about the win on Supreme is that the wave is going to be substantially more adjustable. Um, this is something that they actually talk about a lot um, with axes that you've got an adjustable wave. But the big difference is on an axis, you're either engaging the wedge more or engaging the wedge less. That's really the only control variable you really have. If you engage it more, you end up with a bigger, steeper wave. If you engage it less, you have a smaller, mellower. Wave. So as it gets bigger, it gets steeper. On a Supreme, uh, where you can control the running axis of the boat across multiple planes, you have the ability to control the size and the shape of the wave as independent variables. So you can have a bigger wave or a smaller wave. You can have a steeper wave or a mellow. Wave. But the, so the idea of having a bigger, mellow wave or a smaller, steeper wave are things that you cannot create on an axis, but that you can create on a Supreme, which can be very useful, especially if you're wanting to do things such as uh, spins or you have lighter weight riders that you can dial up your surf wave and um, have it be great without having to change or move any ballast at all. You could have bigger riders and smaller riders and guys with different style boards and that that can just jump out and effectively ride the same wave that you just tune and shape differently um, by just adjusting plates in just a matter of seconds. So... That's going to be a big win on the Supreme side. Uh, the next thing that we can talk about is the wakeboard wake. Um, if you're wakeboarding at a, I, I'd say, intermediate to advanced level and below, you're not going to notice much of any difference between the two wakes. They're both really, really good. Um, if you start going to uh, advanced level and up, and when I'm saying advanced level, what's qualified with that means, when I'm talking about that on a wakeboard, I'm going to say if you're doing 540s and above. In other words, if you're doing 540 spins in the air, landing it with the opposite foot in front than what you were doing previously or above that, whether you're talking 720s, where you're talking about flip spin variations, uh, that's going to be where you're going to have a win, have an advantage going to the axis. 
So if you're going up through, um, if it, if, and if you're not sure as far as 540 spins or whatever, uh, if you're not doing multiple flip variations and that, that's going to be where advanced level and up comes into play. Now, why is that? Uh, the difference is once you get up to full stock ballast, the two boats are going to be pretty identical. The difference you have is the axis is going to be able to accept more weight as you put or a ballast into it for wakeboarding than what the Supreme will. At a certain point, the Supreme's wake will start to break down. So if you start throwing an additional 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 pounds of ballast in the boat above the stock ballast that the boat packs, that's going to be when the uh, Supreme wake breaks down where the axis is going to stay more stable. Where, and that's where that flatter running surface is going to come in and be a more stable platform for adding that additional weight. So that is something that, to keep in mind when you're looking at is if you're pro-level wakeboarding, the axis is going to throw a slightly better wake. If you're doing intermediate and fast level wakeboarding beginner, they're both really good and you probably won't need to go. Um, the next piece is water ski. This is one place where the axis will be a winner. Um, there's some aspect to it as far as the shape of the water ski wake and some of the design, but overall the axis wake is going to be a little flatter and it's going to be a little, a little smoother. If you're recreationally water skiing, like water skiing um, sub 30 miles an hour, and uh, you're you're taking it fairly mellow, they're going to be pretty similar wakes. The big difference is if you're going to be cutting across really aggressively, uh, if you're skiing at 34, 36 miles an hour, something along those lines, and if you're pulling hard through the wakes, you'd like the wake on the axis a little better. Um, at least that's what I've experienced myself personally. So that's going to be a place where it's a little bit nicer. Um, the next piece is driving and handling on performance. Um, this is probably the second most important aspect behind surfing that most people care about. Um, but if you're big into wakeboarding or big into water skiing, that's going to be different for you. So as far as driving and handling, uh, there's going to be pluses and minuses to each one. The advantage that you're going to get on with the Supreme is that your rough water ride is going to be quite a bit better. It's going to handle rougher water conditions, big waves, big open water, much better. And that's due to that V-shaped hole that's designed for surfing. Um, one additional effect to it is that it's going to ride through rough water substantially better. On the other side of it, for the axis, um, it's not going to handle that rough water nearly as well. It's going to bounce and uh, shake and move quite a bit. That's going to really have that slapping motion, that slapping sensation against the water, uh, where you don't get that with a spray. Um, and that's where that flat running surface comes in, where it more bounces and skips as opposed to slicing through the back. Um, the next piece, as far as driving and handling, is uh, maneuverability at high speed. And we'll talk about maneuverability at low speed. So maneuverability at high speed, um, for most people, there's not a big difference, but if you're wanting to do like a big aggressive side slide turn, that's some of the Supremes not going to really do well. Um, that V that V shape is going to want to hook and grab and turn. So it's going it, to, it's going to hold really well. It's going to, it's going to ride like it's on rails, but if you're wanting to have it slide around, like do a power slide or something like that, um, that it's not going to really be able to do that. Um, or an axis you can't. So if you got really smooth water and you want to do a big aggressive power slide turn, that one's going to work uh, a little bit better in an axis than where you're going to get a Supreme uh, if you really like going out and doing that. Um, the, ne the next piece to it is low speed handling. So low speed handling, uh, this one, they're both pretty good at, in it. Um, the main difference is if you're pulling up to, pulling uh, into like your trailer or something, um, the Supreme will track better because of that V hole. So it's not going to drift and wander as you're pulling up. Um, but an axis actually drives pretty well at low speed compared to some other boats. Um, putting on a trailer is going to be quite a bit easier on a Supreme just because that V hole is going to naturally settle in the middle. You're not going to have to make sure that you're positioned properly on the sides like you do uh, on other flat bottom surf boats. Um, so that's going to be one difference you have with a Supreme versus an Axis. Uh, the last thing as far as drivability is how dry of a ride it is. Um, this one is going to be a place that Supreme has a pretty big win mainly just because of the way that the boat has been designed for surfing. So that surf inspired design is not just uh, at surf speed. It's also designed so that when you turn around and pick up a rider, the bow of the boat is designed as such that it continues to increase in surface area as um, as the line goes up the boat. So as you go from the base of the hull up to the rub rail in the bow, it continually gets wider as you go up. That's not necessarily the case with all axis models. A lot of them have just a straight sheer drop off on the sides. Um, which uh, is fine for certain areas. But um, the reason why that makes a difference or why that has an impact for uh, a dry ride is when a Supreme nose dips down into the water, that water is going to continue, the, the buoyancy is going to continue to increase as the bow goes down on the water because the surface area increases. 
That is not the case with that axis because as it goes down, there's no increase in surface area as the nose goes down deeper into the water. So what that means is that an axis is a lot more prone to taking water over the front of the bow, um, hence the battery discussion I mentioned earlier. Um, but that is going to be, and that's what we're referring to a dry ride is if you have people sitting in the bow, how likely are they to get wet? How careful do you have to be while driving? In an axis, you got to be a lot more careful. On a Supreme, you almost really got to try to put water at the front. It's it's something that's really hard to do on accident. So that's something that um, that's something that it factors in for the drivability of the boat. So there's pluses and minuses to each one. Just depends on how you're going to use your boat. You like to do so. That pretty much uh, sums up uh, all the stuff that I've got on the performance end of the spectrum. Uh, kind of the last thing I could dis discuss and talk about is um, the silent stinger plate versus the wedge. Uh, or sorry, not the wedge. The silent stinger plate versus the surf pipe that Axis uses. Um, the main difference is the silent stinger plate on Supremes is a patented system. Uh, on the surf pipe, it's uh, it's kind of its own design on Axis that's similar to a lot of other boats. They both do basically the same thing, which is get the exhaust noise down away from the riders. The main difference you end up having is uh, the surf pipe can impede the water flow and end up creating some wash and some turbulence on your surf wave. Or on the silent stinger, it doesn't do that. Uh, because of the place design and because of that patented aspect. So, but they're both pretty similar. It's not a big deal on the boats, uh, but that is something that is some, just uh, a difference between the two. So, um, the last aspect and thing we can talk about um, before we close, or actually, we've got two more. Uh, we're going to talk about engines and then we want to talk about price tags. So, uh, we're talking about engines between the two boats. They're very similar. They're both done by GM Marine. Effectively, you have the same engine options in either boat. Um, in Malibu's, you've got like the M5 and the M6. In Supremes, you've got, um, you actually have a couple different six liter options. You have, uh, a, and then you have the ZZ series from PCM, which is essentially the same as the M series from Malibu. They're both by, done by GM Marine. It's just whether it's Malibu or PCM as marinizing the engines. So, but they're very, very similar. Uh, the one difference is, is if you're talking about Supreme versus Nexus, Supreme does not offer an LT4 platform, which is an option that's available in some of the larger access boats if you're at higher elevation. Some guys will offer that. Um, the LT4 is a great motor. It's got tons and tons of power. Um, the downside to it is it's going to burn a ton of fuel. And the reason why you can't get it in a Supreme um, at this point is because they've had a lot of reliability issues and the engineers at, at uh, Supreme and Centurion PCM are not wanting to put it in, uh, in a Supreme boat. Um, they, they particularly had some issues with the transmission system and the cooling aspect um, that it factors in. Particularly with the uh, transmission, they're having problems with the transmissions breaking because they don't have a transmission system that's heavy duty enough to handle that over 600 horsepower uh, that's created with that LT4 platform. So it's a motor that PCM makes. They just don't build and put in a Supreme platform yet because they don't have a transmission system that uh, can hold up to it. Um, and in case you're wondering, PCM supplies the transmissions to Malibu. So um, that's the difference. Now, why does Axis run that motor in some of their boats? The answer is because of how much drag the wedge creates, the, how much drag surf gate creates, how much drag the ballast positioning creates, the combination of those things. Um, it means that if you got like a 25 foot, like a T25, um, it's going to be struggling a little bit with that, uh, with that M6 engine if you've got a full crew of people. Um, where on the other side, if you're talking about like a, Supreme ZS252, um, you could put a ZZ6 engine in it. You can have a full crew of you know, 16 people on the boat and full ballast and probably put extra lead in it and it will still do just fine. So there's no power concerns on the end of Supreme because the boats run a lot more efficiently, especially at surf speed. Um, or on the Axis, they do have that LT4 platform for guys that want to make sure they have enough power, particularly at high elevation. Um, but there is a reliability concern to be aware of. So, um, last thing we want to talk about today before we close is pricing. Um, so between the two boats, they're actually shockingly similar in price. Um, that's something that a lot of people are very surprised by when they go and look at them. Um, it used to be the Axis was substantially less expensive, um, than, uh, than not just, uh, Supreme, but than other boats. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, they kind of were in the place of like a heyday at the moment, um, where there were quite a bit less than any other comparable boat. Um, it is now progressively uh, tricked up to where um, it's in some cases the same price and in some areas even more expensive than what you have with like a Supreme and, and even other boats like Moombas, um, ATXs, Mastercraft NXT, things of that nature. So um, between them, 
yeah, a lot of people when they're comparing them are expecting an access to be a lot less just because of the quality of materials and such. And that doesn't necessarily end up being the case. Um, typically apples to apples, um, like a, let's say a Supreme S240 versus a Axis A24. Oftentimes we're seeing pretty similar price or the Supreme coming in at just a couple thousand dollars more than what you have on an Axis. Um, this can also vary depending on what area of the country you're in or, or obviously the options that are available on the boat. But if you're comparing pretty close apples to apples between the boats as much as you can, um, they're going to be pretty close price-wise. So factor that into the discussion when you're looking at all the stuff that we talked about today. So um, I hope this has been informative and helpful for you guys. Uh, I also hope that this has been, uh, and it's been a pair that I'm trying to give you as unbiased uh, of an information take as I can. Obviously, I'm, I've got some biases towards Supreme and I'm financially incentivized uh, if people buy Supremes. Uh, but the real key is I want to make sure that I'm conveying proper and correct information to you guys. And, and part of the reason why I do this is that uh, is because I want to make sure that you are well informed. And I take the perspective that if you're better informed and you better understand, you'll be able to make a better decision. And we found over and over and over again um, with the boats that are sold at Boardco that uh, the better informed people are, the more likely they are to come and purchase a boat from Bordico, or at least to be able to come in and have a, have a clear discussion and, and make some educated decisions. If nothing else, you if you decide, hey, this Axis is a great boat and that's one you want to go with, that's not a problem at all. The big key is I want to make sure that you have a clear visibility of the decision you're making and that you don't end up making a decision only to find out that it ends up being not the best decision for you down the road. So... Hopefully this is helpful. It gives you a lot of good information. If you've got any questions about the stuff that we discussed today, please reach out to us and let us know. We're happy to answer those questions or happy to just talk about them and get your feedback and get your thoughts and information. Um, feel free to comment if there's anything in this video that you really agree with or think I've explained well. If there's things I may not have explained the best or that you may disagree with, that's totally fine. We love to hear from you, Eddie. Um, so hopefully this is really good information and you really enjoy it. If there is anything else you'd like us to, to discuss in the future, let us know. We'd love to talk about the things that are important to you and that you want to have a better understanding and have a better discourse of discussion with. So once again, this is Mitch from Board Kelp. Thank you so much for spending the time with us today. We'll see you later.